solo kills against Fab Fabulous in the Nautilus against Kled matchup as well. And he's looking at a strong pillar of support for the Flashwolves. Okay, as we get into Champ Select, we were talking about Galio off the board. I agree with you in the top side, maybe it's still st like a strong point for Flashwolves, but S S Fab Fabulous has been hanging on. Now, as we continue through Malzahar off the board for Sword Art, we saw the impact in the last game, but we also saw Flashwolves prioritize Zyra as a first pick here. So if Supermassive don't get it off the table, maybe Flashwolves will go for it again. Final ban from Flash Wolves will be the Lulu. So again, banning out Lulu Kingdom, which was Supermassive's go to pick. Oh, hang on. It's Every either Zyra or Syndra here. Oh, it's Zyra. Oh, it's maybe even a first pick Syndra coming from Do Maple. Do they go for first pick Syndra from the I, Flash Wolves? I mean, Maple's played 14 games of it and it has been devastating. Okay, so they opt not to. Go for this might first. be the opportunity for Supermassive to take it away from them. Um, but do they just go Syndra Lee and say, okay, we're just going to try and fight you at your own game? Or will it be the Graves that comes through with the Ash like in previous games? Again, the head coach from Fireball Jensen told me never, ever, ever give Flash Wolf Syndra. Never give Maple Syndra to be specific. So the Massive have yet to take away that mid lane champion. Instead, they get Ash and they get Lee Sin. And we will oh, see no. Maple pick up Syndra heading into game three. So I like the takeaway of the Lee Sin. Now, do we go to the Graves? later on in the draft for Casa. I think at this point, Flash Wolves just go, okay, let's pick a good bottom lane because we already, in our minds, we've already won mid lane, right? Echo is the likely counter pick here, but they, that's not what they go. They yeah. massive go down to the support. Instead, they pick up Nami as their support of choice, opting to go for their mid lane and top lane picks last. Flash Wolves will pick up Varus as their AD carry of choice. There is a chance for Super Massive now to pinch the jungle pool. We don't see too many junglers being played at the moment. At least comes to mind. You can pick up Graves here as well. But out is going to go the Echo, potentially. We might see the, the Zillion taken away, which in the play-in stage was uh, a pick that people were playing into the Syndra. Um, so Naru is potentially about to lose his good counter matchups here and potentially could lose the mid lane quite hard if Casa conti uh, if Maple continues the performance from the previous games. So there's the Echo Bear coming out from Maple. So is it a Graves ban here? That probably makes the most sense. Then you force Casa onto the Kha'Zix. Yep. I don't know whether it'll be Zillion here or whether it'll be something like the Orianna or the Ari that we've seen try to be played into the Syndra. I mean, Bear in mind, Kha'Zix is still a very comfortable champion for Casa. Yeah. He's played it almost as much as his Leeson and his Graves. Let's see if that's the champion he does go towards. Shen is the final ban from the Flash Bulls. We get a Fizz pick coming up with Supermassive. <laughs> Gigabyte Marines do yeah. flex this in the mid lane for Optimus. Let's see if Naru's going to do the same thing into the Syndra. And Naru played all the way through a ton of different metas. I know Fizz is a champion he can play, so it is a flex potential here. But that means Flash Wolves can just pick lanes that to some extent do well. Now I'm expecting it to go to Naru because it is a good pick into the Syndra. Uh, typically can control. Uh, that, that Syndra matchup and mitigates a lot of the, the presence of that level 6. Ooh, we spoke about Kha'Zix, <laughs> but it's the Rengar that comes out. Now, if we see MMD go for something like a Nautilus, that's where the flex may come out. If they Nautilus here, they pick badly into both matchups here. We saw that mistake happen from teams up against the Gigabyte Marines. This is a pick we see very commonly blind picked into the top lane. Yeah. Gragas, very strong top lane pick. We saw Hansa pick it up yesterday. Uh, even the top laner for Gigabyte Marines was picking up as well, Stark. Both now having really good games in a champion. And it's a very comfortable top lane pick throughout most regions, only now seeing play in this series. Yeah, and, and MMD actually didn't play it during the regular split either. Ah, so, first time, so, Gragas. First time we're going to see it. Uh, is a fine matchup into the, grum uh, the Rumble in the sense that you know your presence in team fights is going to outweigh the lane presence early on that Rumble has. Now, of course, Rumble TPs into fights as well, but. Maybe we'll see Supermassive getting themselves ahead in these side lanes to take control of the game. But they do take a note out of the Group B friends from the play-in stage as they will throw Fizz into the mid lane for Naru. Yeah, good matchup into that Syndra, which potentially sets up Supermassive with the, the beginning of the game that they want. They've also got the Nami into the Karma in the bottom lane. As long as you take a, a decent trade early on, you can out-sustain that Karma significantly. Good threat at level six as well. So super massive. This is the kind of competition that if they can prevent Casa and Maple from getting ahead, maybe they can take control of this game.
Um, it will be difficult, though. And again, Maple is on Syndra. Champion he's played way too many times in the LMS. Double digits on the champion. No <laughs> other champion has come close to that number of times played by Maple. But he does have a very wide and diverse champion pool. And I'm excited to see what this Syndra is all about. And this is where we need to see Naru understanding the trading patterns in this lane. We know he can play Fizz, <laughs> but Fizz into Syndra is a matchup that early on, Syndra is able to keep at a, a distance and utilize the spheres, get damage down. Fizz does struggle until a couple of levels have been accrued and you can actually start utilizing some more of his kit. So I, I don't want to see Naru headlong charge into this lane and take a bad trade and Maple, you know, gets Thunderlord's procs time and time again and basically wins the lane. And there's the crowd again in the CBL studio getting behind the flash rules. They want revenge against Supermassive who can knock out the red cannons from their respective groups. And we're heading into game number three of this best of five series. Flash Wolves, if they win here, they'll move into the next round of MSI, going up against the likes of North America, Europe, Korea, as well as China. Whereas Supermassive, if they drop a game here, they still have one more chance to qualify in that final match against the Gigabyte Marines. Oh, it's the same as game one. This time, though, Dumbledore gives over some extra presence in the lane. Does obviously now concede control of bot side because you have to be careful of where the Gragas, the Syndra are now, but good wards in response now, just to catch if anybody's walking back up towards mid lane. Um, oh, I don't quite clear that one out, so now they know where Sword Art and Betty are. Look at that, 10 gold lead for Sword Art. They're winning! <laughs> They're in the lead, stress. That's what we expect from Flash Wolves. <laughs> we'll see how they can snowball this advantage in bot lane. <laughs> So Betty as well sort of will get some positional advantage when this first wave comes in. Casa is trying to stay as far away from wards as possible. We'll get a leash from MMT, it seems, all the way from top lane, helping out their jungler. Yeah, you can see that Casa drops back in the jungle here uh, just to kind of defend any other shenanigans coming through. But as you said, the start from MMD. MMD knows he's going to get pushed in at the beginning of this lane. He knows he won't really be able to take control. And also that Fab Fabulous is very likely to have gone over to help Storm Age himself. So we'll only be slightly further behind uh, on the time. And it helps Casa out significantly. Rengar on the Raptor start is very difficult early on to take a lot of damage down and we did have those adjustments come through onto Rengar which made his ability to heal up not quite so uh, insane as it used to be. Such a great leash coming out from MMT. Keeps yeah. Casa fully topped off. He didn't even smite yet. And now he, he smites. He's doing an entire red side clear. Yes, Rengar has been nerfed heading into MSI, but when he was very popular just before his nerfs, they would usually go for an entire side of the jungle clear, yeah. recall, pick up a long sword, go back to the other side of the jungle. And that's exactly what he's looking to do here. He knows Storm Age can't outpace him up to the red side that quickly. So any, uh, sorry, onto the blue side. So any opportunity that, that Storm Age would have is kind of reduced by that. Now Casa gets full health, has the double jungle items to start, even picks up a control ward and now goes to his blue buff. They know that that Lee Sin can't really effectively be there. And look at this ward already. They defended against a play like this, or they made a play like this in the last game. And now Flash Wolves with one ward alone defend against Storm Age being on the bottom side of the map. Yeah, he was looking to try and get behind Betty and Soda who are pushing up aggressively. This is the first time we've really seen the bottom lane from Flash Wolves push up very early on into the game. Remember the way they like to play, push mid aggressive, push bottom aggressive, and then allow Casa to have free reign over the opposite jungle and move wherever he'd like. <laughs> Look at how aggressively Maple is playing. They knew where Storm Age was. They knew he was around the lane. And he still goes aggressive, but look at where Storm Age is yep. heading now. He's right behind. No wards have detected him. Betty as well, Sword Art, have to be a little bit careful. You can see they are playing slightly safer. Dumbledore is waiting, though. Yeah, can and they go. The bubble. Does not connect the Sonic Wave or the bubble, and Betty just walks away laughing at the rest of Supermassive. Betty lined himself up just in case he needed that difficult flash and then walks away. And now Maple is turning the pressure back on. Naru has been trading his health pots and trading his health away to get a CS lead here against Maple. That means Naru recalls, TPs back to the lane and is able to at least contend. But what that does now mean is Maple is going to be able to catch up on that CS while he's out of the lane. We'll see whether Maple can actually push out Naru once they've re you know, return to the lane. It's going to be Amped Home. Maybe he's waiting for Doran's ring at this point to get in back to the lane, but 
Naru should be in a fine spot. Currently, Castle is double the CS of Stone Mage, who has been trying to wander down into the bottom lane, and you might face check. Hey, Rengar, it's a double buff to Lee Sin, though. Casa sees him running towards him, tries to take the Raptor camp instead, gets three of the small Raptors, taking some damage from Stone Mage. We'll smite away the big one. Whoa, Stone Mage from downtown! I don't think you want that tree. Yeah, no, Maple's coming right behind you, but he's going to be able to try and lock you down. Flash early from Lee Sin. Naru's joining the fight as well, healing up from Casa. First blood picked up by the Rengar. Swiftly traded by Naru. Fab Fabulous is coming out, and so is MMD. Flash away from Naru, thinking MMD was going to body slam. Flash there, blows a summoner, but it's just a one-for-one -one trade, and Fab Fabulous slowly burns the Gragas a lot. MMD TP'd into the back of that fight to cut off Storm Age, and Storm Age actually kind of called the bluff there by coming back towards the fight. The Syndra Sun was ready to come out, do this small enclosed area in front of Raptors, and he moves away. That inevitably ends up netting them the ability to get the kill down onto Kasa, but Flash Wolves already starting to group. Naru is doing a good job so far. He's got through the early part of this lane that is tricky for him, and with that Dark Seal that he picked up, obviously enhances the ability for him to, uh, to you know, heal up. MMD was maybe looking for the Body Slam Flash there. Mm -hmm. uh, you watch Fab Fabulous come forward in that lane, and you have to, to really respect the damage that'll come from Gragas. So this is the exchange. Maple puts the damage down on Storm Age, throws the spear out, and is anticipating Lee to just keep on running. Storm Age puts the damage down on Caster, which allows Naru to actually pick up some extra damage and get that kill. And then Fab Fabulous and MMD make themselves known. Doesn't result in anything more from that exchange, though. Very curious, though, from Storm Age to go for that decision of jumping in on top of the Rengar. Kasa mm. was already away, had the help of Mabel close by. Naru was nowhere close to MMD, running on top of an equalizer. Fab Fabulous trying to catch him off guard. Has been doing well in this lane. MMD is going for the budget Rod of Ages build. <laughs> yes, he's picked up three Doran's rings here, gets a plant to keep him topped off, and Stone Mage trying to make his way towards the top side of the map as well. Fab Fabulous trying to maximize his damage as much as he can right now. Oh, Double Doge. Oh, he's very low. Arrow to the knee connects to Double Doge as Betty takes him down. That was almost unexpected for the Nub. Didn't see the setup for it. Now Maple's got to be careful. Fish is out. Trying to run on in, immediately backs up towards the turret. So even though Maple is pushing up so aggressively, he's always got Castle somewhere in his back pocket. And Naru has to be very careful if he ever uses the playful trickster uh, aggressively or, or at the beginning of a trade. That's where the, the unleashed power comes out from. And that's the difficult spot here. You have to kind of save that. But Naru now no fish. Zynod's been pushed off the turret here by Betty and Sword Up, who are slowly taking back this lane. Here's that kill again to Dumbledore. Yeah, gets the empowered part of the Karma Q out first. And Dumbledore just goes, I can get, get an auto, get the slow up, oh, right? Oh, the final minion auto. Yeah, just enough damage coming out from the Flash Wolves to be able to take him down. Goodness. Now, bottom side of the map, Zynod not going to have that great of a time. Already, Varus and Karma doing very well. He was forced to use the heal after Dumbledore died to add, ins add insult to injury. Kasa still waiting in the wings of this mid lane. He's ready in case Naru tries <laughs> to go toe to toe against Maple. He's ready to get Maple ahead. Uh, to put it in perspective, how far ahead Maple has been over this series in general. Uh, super massive over the two games in this series so far have accrued five kills as a team. Maple has accrued 17 on his own. Um, so he's been a little bit fed. Uh, you count it all together now. It's seven. Oh, no, not even that. Sorry. It's now... Uh, it's six. six. Kills. They're still not even halfway there on another they're, game. They're almost they're just over a third of the way towards Maple's kills. It's so difficult. Maps becomes hard at that point when you're like, how far ahead is he? How well has he snowballed? I mean, come on, maps are always hard anyway. <laughs> well, we'll see how Maple can, if he can rack up uh, the kill score now on this Syndra that we've heard so much about. I like that Supermassive were prepared to take the Fizz into it, and it's been working well. Uh, you would consider Naru being ahead in this matchup for now, even on CS plus the kill. We'll have control of the side lane as well. So that is one winning factor for Supermassive that they can utilize now if this game does start tipping more in their favor. And again, huge credit to Supermassive. Once again, three games in a row, 10 minutes into the match. They're yeah. looking like they're nice and even against Flash Balls. Yes, they're a thousand gold behind, but that sort of deficit's common even amongst high level games where you see like the best teams Korea taking on best teams in China. 
Supermassive holding on against the Flash Wolves, but it's 13 to 15 minutes mm. where the Wolves really strike. Yeah, it is. And so much of that comes from Caster's Lee Sin that I now kind of have to wonder, will we have the same impact on the Rengar? I have to think yes, because it's Kasa, and every time he gets his hands on a, a jungler that can have that kind of playstyle where you're going aggressive, he tends to show up. But it, it's not the quintessential Kasa pick, right? And I think if there's one avenue now that Supermassive have taken from the Flash Wolves, it might be stealing the lease in. I have a feeling we might be having a bot lane exchange as our observers just catching out the fact that an arrow was fired out. Didn't kind of hit by the looks of it. Didn't even force a flash. Yeah, Stone Mage was waiting in the wings, but the arrow not connecting. Interestingly, though, look at Maple moving back up to mid lane now. He was already getting out of the lane. He knows Naru has teleport available and could join a potential exchange. So Maple cognizant of the fact that that bot lane exchange was even in motion. Yeah, and if you're fighting in the mid lane against Maple, you're actually fighting two on one. Cast <laughs> Even when he's not there, he's somehow there. Uh, Fab Fabulous is still pushing out top side of the map against MMD. This time the lane's got a much more even between the two players. Fab Fabulous doing what you expect from a rumble, pushing out the waves constantly against MMD, who is more than happy to sit there and just sustain through the damage. He must have a lot of gold in his inventory right now, though, because you see he had the Blasting Wand Ruby Crystal before, only now has picked up like an Amp Tome on top of it. So I'm interested to see how far ahead he can get on the build uh, now for Fab Fabulous. But he will be a reliable side lane push presence for a lot of this game. Gragas can do a good job of clearing the wave out, but typically Rumble is the one that will have the control there. Back into this melee, still just farming with the maple as well as Naru. Kasa trying to sneak a elemental dragon away from Supermassive. Cloud Dragon is the first one to spawn in this game. Nervous to take away nice and easy. Not the best of dragons, but still nice to have. Effective on Rengar as well. Allows you to come out of the shadows very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, although Hawkshot does make that kind of difficult until you force the ult from Kasa. But God, there is the ult talking about it. Flash Wolves, they want to go. TP's coming in already. The hunt. It's 12 minutes into the match stress. Double Doge will get knocked back. Kasa over the wall. Leap frogs onto Double Doge. <laughs> and gets a kill for the Flash Wolves. Again, just that instant aggressiveness. Well, the execution wasn't perfect. They blast Dumbledoge pretty much past his Flash to safety, but Carson just goes, okay, I'll just get him anyway. Flashes over the wall, jumps on for the kill, and now they're looking for Tower First Blood. They've already got it half health. Naru's coming down, arrow from base, but it's too far ahead of the curve here. Like, Stormage can't close the distance properly. If he does, he goes into three. Oh, he's locked oh, in now. Stormage already so dead. low. Good kick, but look at Flash Wolves just turning around, picking up an easy kill. Betty actually blocking the fish for his support. Can he live through it? The answer is yes, as Naru is forced to play full Trickster away. And you look at that play, and you can see where the play in Stormage's mind is. You can see he's saying, hey, Flash Wolves did this to us so many times. You're only a couple of seconds out. I can disrupt them, delay them enough, put the damage down. But that couple of seconds is the difference between actually getting Naru into the fight in time, because Naru was saving his TP, that it's not the clean follow-up to the fight from Supermassive. That could have been a great play. The arrow hit, in came the lease in, but just that split-second difference is what separates a successful fight from an unsuccessful one. Flash Wolves still come out with the lead from that exchange. What do you know? We're 30 minutes in, and Flash Wolves have a sizable gold lead for this time in the game. 2,500 gold up. Fat Fabulous is looking to try and burn MMD down. Already down to half health, looking to try and body slam away, but... The body block from Fab Fabulous is good. He tries to flash forward, gets a slow. There's the equalizer. Knockback comes out of the ultimate. MMD will waddle his way back towards the safety of this turret. A lot of people look at that and say, hey, why did he flash first rather than the body slam? Well, if Fab Fabulous flashes on top of him during that animation, it stops him and, and basically cuts out MMD's ability to get away there. But Stormage, speaking of his ability to get away, may very well look for a kick here. Ooh. I don't think they realize how close Kasa is, but MMD, MMD's dead. Yeah, we're gonna get taken out by Stormage. Incredibly low, uh, Rengar is hunting. They've gotta be careful, jumps oh. forward, gets one. Is he gonna try and fight Fab Fabulous? The answer is yes, but... Don't go to the bush. Do not go near the bush, now he's coming. Fab Fabulous. Now he's trying to get back here. Kasa stuck underneath his turret at the moment. Fish and the mechanical machine are trying to pincer in the Rengar. There goes the fish. Oh, oh he's What? Still will walk back into it. 
No, you don't want to walk into a shark. Have you not watched Jaws, Casa? <laughs> Still will fall. Naru picks up a kill for Supermassive. Just when he thought it was safe to go back into the top lane, at that point gets bound down. But now, look, it's the tower push coming through on the bottom side of the map once again. Zeitnot and Dumbledore having to concede presence. It's damage for now. It's not the tower, but again and again, Flash Wolves are looking for this. That's a, a good flash out of Betty, but of course, that's the whole point of these ash lanes. You throw out the arrow, you get the flash. Next time the arrow's back up, you should get the kill. But he lives to find another day. Zygnar was, he went fishing almost against the Flash Wolves. This time around, a lot more stable for Super Massive. I mean, it is do or die for them at the moment. It is match point for the Wolves. For this series, at this point, it's do or die on getting into the MSI groups today. Of course, Flash Wolves and Super Massive the loser of this will face uh, Gigabyte Marines on Saturday for the final spot. Three of the four teams that were in round two will advance yep. to the MSI group stage. Only one team will not continue. But at the way Flash Wolves are currently playing, they're expected to move on. Yeah, feels like they've already kind of booked their travel. Uh, they're like, okay, we're going. We're just gonna win. <laughs> really quick and clean, apparently. And some some people say that this is the second best region heading into MSI. Coming in from the Flash Wolves after their dominant split from the LMS. It's impressive. A lot of people, up until recently, really underestimate the LMS teams that come out. I, I mean, we've had a number of World Championships and people didn't really give them credit, but at the same time, there have been a blip here or there on the radar for uh, the likes of Flash Wolves. And HQ, which is the, the other team that typically comes out uh, strong in the LMS region, but I, I think when you look holistically over a long time, they've always been performing up to a very high standard. They have. So Massive and Flash Wolves have a very similar story. So Massive very dominant in their region. Flash Wolves as well. We're talking about how they were incredibly undefeated for majority of the split until they dropped a single game in a best of five series against AHQ. But in, in the LMS, it's really just Flash Wolves, AHQ as well, and then maybe JT from time to time. Mm. It's very interesting for the Flash Wolves because as uh, Naru gets himself out of mid lane, the Flash Wolves almost single-handedly changed how the European LCS played in the sense that they showed so many openings in G2, H2K, and Unicorns of Love that a lot of the teams went, okay, we'll emulate that. We'll take this mid lane push into the jungle and, and fight the jungler as much as we can. And that really changed how the teams like G2, H2K ended up thinking about the game. And that's impressive for one team, one tournament over one weekend to go, okay, well, we'll just dumpster the like top three teams and make it look easy. Only H2K showed them some sense of uh, fight. And Flash Wolves just ended up coming back into that series and looking very, very strong. Super massive. Now want to try their hands to take down an Elemental Dragon. Second Cloud Dragon of the game to spawn. And 18 minutes into the match, and they're only about 2,000 gold behind the Flash Wolves. And this will be Dragon secure. No one could have decided Flash Wolves are there to stop this. The thing for Super Massive right now is they need to somehow defend the inevitable tower pushes. You can see the low health in the bottom tower, low health on the top tower. Fab Fabulous uses the equalizer to just clear out the wave. At some point, Flash Wolves will start a fight that is targeting those towers. They'll take a kill and try and move in on likely bottom tower. That's what they've done quite a few times. That's what Supermassive have to be prepared to defend against. Otherwise, the map opens up, Flash Wolves take control, and Supermassive are left kind of lagging behind. But Naru, I like this, moving down from the middle lane, trying to get the fight started themselves. If they can take first tower, but that would be exactly what they need. No Flash! Betty flash forward, Fish does not connect. Still will be able to get the knockup. Betty falls first. Teleport coming into the bottom lane as well. But MMD is here, not going to be able to knock him back enough. Zeitnok going to get locked out. Here comes Maple looking for a kill of his own. Zeitnok's got nowhere to run as MD chases forward for the rest of the team. One for two trades still going 
in favor of the Wolves. I like that Supermassive were trying to make a play onto the bottom side, but without real vision on where Casa is and the way that Flash Wolves can regroup themselves. They brought MMD down to the fight. Fab Fabulous actually canceled his teleport in order to push top at the same time. So this was the start. Zeitnot gets the arrow onto Betty because we know his flash is unavailable. Good layering of the bubble, but the fish doesn't quite land. And look at all of the, uh, the healing that comes onto Betty and delays Naru uh, and Storm Age at that point under the tower. Then Zeitnot can't really hold on once Maple is down from the middle lane. And Flash will turn around the fight. So we saw both towers go down. Didn't see who got tower first blood though during the replay. Mm -hmm. um, Fabulous had pushed up a little quicker, but of course that tower was already low. Oh, Naru getting chased down here by Maple. Sword Art's moving into the mid lane as well. He's trying to dodge out these skill shots. Tether coming through as well. Storm Age wants a piece of the action as well as he jumps on in. Well, at that point, there's always a bigger fish. Oh, here we go. It's a flash kick. Sword Art gets taken out first. Rengar looking to try and jump into the rest of Super Massive, but. They make a big play mid lane. With no TP on MMD, there was no way for the Flash Wolves to regroup. So this is the kind of opening that we haven't yet seen. Oh, Whoa. Whoa. oh, double combo as MMD and Casa go in at the exact same time. Betty is going to be able to kite five fabulous to pick up a double. Naru is going into the back line. Betty trying to blast cone himself away. MMD trying to fight Godfist least in as well as Nami, but Naru is on the hunt. Slowed down by the hell of arrows. Second blast cone for Betty to get out. Maple's coming up just to deter him. We thought that was the opening that we hadn't really seen from Flash Wolves. The Supermassive were taking control of. Well, they weren't expecting Casa and the rest of the team to just jump onto Zeitnot, who didn't have his Flash available. Ooh. Naru jumps out from MMD. They flash the icons. Gives him a bit of a taunt as well. As he stands still after the body slam. He's loving it, Naru. Still flashing his icon. You look at his player cam. He's <laughs> smiling. He's got a cheeky grin there. And this is what Naru needs to be doing. He's 3-0 and zero on this game. He is perhaps the last hope for Supermassive on this setup. They can get a fight started and he can carry it through. We saw that for Optimus from the Gigabyte Marines. If he can have that impact in team fights, maybe it's enough to hold because Flash Wolves are forcing fights so fast that Supermassive can't rely on their side laners anymore. There's a tidal wave. Supermassive looking for an early fight. Naru takes half his health and damage to kick things off. Stomach just going to try and get into the back line. So no Flash available for the least sin. Flash Wolves will take another turret. They already sent Betty top lane to get one. They already got two in the mid lane. His MND takes some damage from Naru, but too tanky here but blink and you miss it. It goes from super massive, looking like they can contend to now being Ooh. 5k down. Betty catches him with the tip of the ultimate, but he's gonna get burnt alive. Fat Fabulous fancies a fight. We'll get jumped up by Casa. Fish does connect. Casa gonna be able to escape for now. Oh, MMT in the, the back line. Sight not gonna fall. MMT picks up that kill. Dumbledore's locked down by the body slam. He's gonna be the next one to die as the Flash Wolves will get three more kills against Supermassive. Another game where from even to full control in about 10 minutes for the Flash Wolves. They have just turned this game completely around. Storm Age, he's going to try and get this steal. It will be a hero moment if he can get it, but it won't likely be enough to save the series. And Flash Wolves even say, OK, this isn't worth it. We're already ahead. We're so far up, we can just go back and do this the right way. Back out with just over 6,000 gold lead. And, and again, another fight. This is. This is very aggressive from Betty to be moving forward like this into Supermassive, but they know that Zaitnot, Storm Age, and Naru are off to the side, so they buy enough time, Redemption kicks in, Casa doesn't die to Zaitnot, and then the stun. Nothing Zaitnot can do from that, doesn't have any way of getting himself out alive, and Dumbledore is left all alone. Flash Wolves, again, immaculate team fighting is so difficult to contend with. Maple, although he's up against a fifth, has been able to be dominant in the lane, still looking really fancy on this Syndra. And you know it really hurts as a bot laner to look at your items and they're like, I'm nearly a hurricane, and you find the guy the other side has hurricane and QSS already. Well, he's gonna have to run from Naru right now. That's how significant the lead is, that Betty is pretty much safe at all times now. Uh, though, going one on one against Casa. I don't think you want to pick a fight between these two. Even <laughs> gives it over to Maple. He gets the turret. He though. got the turret. It's a win. It's a win. We'll give it. Slight not. <laughs> he got the turret. If you're watching the play against Casa, just turns to his left and goes, "Really? <laughs> really? Really, Maple? You couldn't hit him with the cube?" So, 
Well, Maples, I know. I'm just focused. I only want the, the kills. Wrecking the my number up. Uh, right now, we are at... The, the kill count between Maple and Supermassive is 10 kills for Supermassive, 19 kills for Maple. So Flash Wolves <laughs> having the most dominant um, series I've seen from them in quite some time. Keep this up and eventually flame for us. Faster now looking to try and take down an Infernal Dragon for his team, but Supermassive do group up. There is no Zygnot available for them as he's running out of base at the moment, but Flash Wolves peel off, move towards mid lane. I think if I'm not mistaken, Maple just threw Blue Buff at Hang Dragon on. to kill it. Now Fab Fabulous is dead. He did throw Blue Buff at Dragon <laughs> to kill it, but during that time, Fab Fabulous just gets obliterated by a body slam. Ultimate combat member of D. Stomage is going to get locked down here. He's trying to run away. Casa jumps on in. Double Doge is going to get locked down by the Baller Strike. Ooh. Is this the push to win again from the Flash Wolves? Well, that's another three kills. It's either the push for the inhibitor or for the Baron now. They have pretty much everything at their disposal. You cannot argue how big of a statement Flash Wolves are making here about wanting to get into the MSI group, how dominant they are looking. And if I'm already there, if I'm TSM, G2, Team WE, and maybe not SKT, I'm afraid of the Flash Wolves right now. And those are some great matchups that you're looking forward to. And unlike the other Wolves, the Dire Wolves, you have a legitimate reason to be afraid <laughs> of this team right now, because the Flash Wolves look dominant. Oh, that combo. MMD Ooh. with the cask in the middle of the body slam just gets the knockback on Fab Fabulous. And it was just lights out from here. So Massive try to fight back, but Cast is already in the back lines and all they can do is retreat. I am so looking forward to a Flash Wolves SKT rematch that we've seen a couple of times. They are the Korean Slayers. Ooh. Very fun match to watch. At the moment, though, Super Massive are still fighting for their right to try and advance in the MSI here. They pick up an Infernal Dragon for yeah. themselves. 9,000 gold behind the Flash Wolves at match point. It's a very dire situation for Super Massive. Absolutely. There, there is like one shot left, one last fight in the tank by the looks of it. And that's to say that if Super Massive can, can somehow get like this team fight where Fizz comes in on the flank with a perfect equalizer. They can delay the game, but look at how aggressive Casa is. That might be the undoing of the Flash Wolves, but with match point already there. Arrow, Arrow oh, Ooh, splits between. the wickets Ooh, there. The Suddenly, Flash Wolves turn it around. Dumbledore is going to be the second one to die in this fight. Double body pop from MMD. Will get kicked back by Stone Age, who also gets knocked back by MMD himself. Naru is forced to flee towards the other side of the map. And again, just like that, Flash Wolves get two more kills. Flash Wolves will now push out the top side tower. They have full control of the jungle. It'll be either a movement out to Baron or the second inhibitor of the game. More likely towards the Baron with 20 seconds left on Fab Fabulous. It, it, it's going to be a clinical end to this game. They're actually going to heal up yeah, and try and go for it. Flash Wolves want another inhibitor turret here. MMD trying to get into the back lines. Doesn't have Flash available, but the body, body buff still threatening. Naru goes in. Zonia's being buffed. Dumbledore throws out the tidal wave as he tries to hex tech throat about his way out. Going back on it. MMD tanking up a turret. My fall here. So Mage into the back line. Oh, he got gets disrupted. interrupted halfway through his sonic wave. And Flash Wolves will push for another inhibitor turret. Look at that fan. We're just sitting way too far away. Trying to use his flame he's, spitter there. He's no ultimate. He can't capitalize on the fact that MMD has no health. And now Maple is just destroying Zeitnot. Here goes Naru, though. Straight on top of Betty. Body buff from MMD knocks him back. He will fall first to Fat Fabulous. But Castle is here. Getting it slowed down by the Karma. Fat Fabulous is trying to run. Scrap Shield increases his mimicry. But now he's just sitting inside the jungle. Flashing of icons everywhere. Double kill for the Rengar. And Flash Wolves with the A's are looking to try and tie up this series. That's it. Super Minions are already pushing through into the mid lane. Flash Wolves have been dominant in a very swift 3 and 0 against Super Massive. 3 0 every single game, sub 30 minutes. Not only was this match an absolute shellacking, but the entire series was. Good night, Stone Age. See you next week as Flash Wolves move towards the Nexus. They will advance to the next round of Mid Season Invitational 2017. Make no mistake, the Flash Wolves have come here looking dominant. They won the IEM World Championship earlier this year and they are looking poised to be a real contender at the MSI group stage. Man, they looked incredibly strong. Near the crowd there, they've got the revenge they were looking for against Supermassive. Knocked 